This is video number 49 in our series on tensor calculus. In this video, we'll derive the voss weyl formula. This formula will provide us with a very useful alternative to the way in which we evaluate both the divergence and the Laplacian. Back in video 28, we developed this expression for the divergence of a vector t. In fact, if you remember that far back, that's how we started the discussion regarding the covariant derivative in the first place. Well, it may have occurred to you that uh, all this time we've never really gone through each of our sample coordinate systems to show what the divergence looks like in each of those coordinate systems. Well, that was actually by design. And the reason is that it turns out there is a more convenient formula to use for that purpose. Uh, as convenient and concise as this particular formula is, it's not particularly useful in terms of evaluating the divergence in each of our sample coordinate systems. So in today's video, we're going to derive an alternate form for the divergence that is much more useful for that purpose. So to get started, let's just expand this out for its full meaning. The uh, covariant derivative of Ti would be equal, first of all, to the partial derivative of our vector component Ti with respect to Zi. Then we're going to add a uh, Christoffel symbol term here. This is a contravariant object, so we need the plus sign. So we'll have uh, gamma, and the upper index here matches this index, which is I. And the first index down here matches this index, which is also I. Then we form a contraction K with TK, like this. And so this is the full exploded meaning of the covariant derivative of TI. It's a contraction. Uh, it's a, an invariant expression because it produces a scalar value. It's a full contraction. All right, well, now what I want to do is to rename the indexes in the second term. Both i and k are dummy indexes, so I can rename them. So let's do that, and you'll see why in just a minute. So we'll have the partial derivative of ti with respect to zi. And this time, I'm going to rename i to m. So we'd have gamma with an m here and here. And then I'm going to rename K to I. All right, so these two expressions are exactly equal. All I've done is to rename the dummy indexes. Now, in the previous video, the one just before this, we derived this expression for the partial derivative of the volume element with respect to ZI. And what I want to point out here, you'll, you'll see that this term right here is the one we have right up there. So what I want to do is let's rearrange this expression just a little bit here. We'll, um, you know, this will lead us to the fact that the Christoffel symbol with this M, MI expression, we can uh, solve for this explicitly just by dividing by our volume element. So this uh, gamma MMI would be equal to 1 over the square root of z times the partial derivative of our volume element with respect to zi, like this. Okay, so now what I can do is I can take this expression, substitute this for this, meaning we'll put this in place of the expression right here. Okay, so that's what we'll do. We now have the divergence of our vector t is going to be equal to this first term, the partial derivative of ti with respect to zi. And now we'll make this substitution. Instead of gamma mmi, we'll use this expression. Sorry, it's a plus sign here. And then uh, we'll have 1 over square root of z times the partial derivative of z, square root of z, with respect to zi. And we have this last term 
of ti right here. Okay, next step, let's factor out this uh, term of 1 over square root of z and make the expression look like this. We'll, we'll uh, develop this as a grouped expression and we'll factor out 1 over square root of z. And of course, if we do something like that, we have to include a factor of square root of z for the first term like this. And then the second term is just the partial derivative of the volume element with respect to zi times ti. Okay, now look real close. You'll see that this expression right here is the same as this. If we distribute this to the first term, these get canceled out to give us this. And then, of course, that expression over here leaves us with this. All right, now what's the point of that? Well, um, where that takes us is this, that we now have the divergence of our vector t is equal to 1 over the square root of z. But if you look closely at this expression, this is exactly what you'd get if you applied the product rule uh, when taking the partial derivative of a, a product of terms. In other words, um, this expression you see here is nothing but the partial derivative with respect to zi of the product of terms square root of z times ti. You know, if we're going to take the partial derivative of this, we first take the derivative of one term like this, leaving the other fixed, and then we take the partial derivative of this term, leaving this one fixed, which is what we've got over there. So uh, these two are exactly equivalent. Now this expression you see here is uh, the alternate expression for the divergence that I wanted to show you. And it's known as the Voss-Weil formula. Now I said in the beginning that the new form we were going to derive is more convenient for evaluating the divergence in our sample coordinate systems. Well, let's talk about why that's true. Well, look at this expression here for a moment. As we expand it out, we have a dummy index here, which is going to expand out to three terms when we, we expand it all out. Here we have a double contraction. So this is going to be nine terms. We iterate through each value of m and each value of i. We're going to get a total of 12 terms in this expression right up here. But when we look at this one, there's only a single contraction. We're only going to have three expressions here. We have to take three partial derivatives of this product right here, and we'll have the end result. So what we've done here is to eliminate this Christoffel symbol out of the expression, and as a result, we've collapsed the expression down to only three terms. Now, to be sure, this form is still quite important to us because it, it's more succinct and it's easier to work with on a theoretical sense when we're working with the divergence as part of a bigger formula in tensor calculus when we're working to resolve some expression in a theoretical sense and we're not dealing with a particular coordinate system this is the one that is more useful but when it comes time to actually expand the expression out and find the divergence in a particular coordinate system this one is much more useful. Now, back in video 39, we introduced this expression for the Laplacian operator. We said that the Laplacian operator is actually the covariant derivative of this expression, which is in turn the contravariant component of the gradient. So let's expand this out to its full meaning. It's the covariant derivative with respect to i of the contravariant component of f. And you remember we defined the contravariant uh, derivative uh, to be z i j times the covariant derivative of f, like this. But for a scalar function like f, 
the covariant derivative with respect to j is nothing more than the partial derivative. So this in turn is equal to the covariant derivative of z i j times the partial derivative of f with respect to z j, like this. And you'll need to go back to uh, video 39 to, to see how all of this was developed. But the point here is that um, the Laplacian is really the divergence of this expression. And this expression is the contravariant component of the vector that's created when we create the gradient out of f. OK, so that being the case, then we can use the Voss-Weil formula to simplify the uh, evaluation for the Laplacian. And we do it this way. The Laplacian of f will be 1 over square root of z, our volume element, times the partial derivative with respect to zi of our volume element z. But this time, instead of ti, we're going to substitute in this expression, which is, you know, ti is the contravariant component of vector t. Well, this expression is the contravariant component of the gradient. So we're just going to substitute that in. z i j times the partial derivative of f with respect to z j. And we need to put parentheses here because we're taking the partial derivative of this entire product. And this, then, is the expression we can use to evaluate the Laplacian in each of our coordinate systems. Now, what we said about the divergence earlier holds true here for the Laplacian as well. Uh, we're still going to want to use this expression for the Laplacian when we're developing expressions inside tensor calculus. If we're not dealing with a specific uh, coordinate system, this is a simpler and more concise form for the Laplacian. But if we're going to evaluate the Laplacian relative to any coordinate system, this is much easier to work with. Looks more cumbersome, but in the end, it has fewer terms than this. And uh, for that reason, it is uh, more convenient for looking at specific coordinate systems. So what we've done in this video is to derive a new formula called the Voss file formula. And it's this expression right over here. And we see that that is an alternate way of uh, expressing the divergence. So we can express the divergence either this way or this way. And we said that this form right here is much more concise and useful as we plug it into various tensor calculus equations on a theoretical basis when we're not dealing with a specific coordinate system. But if we're going to evaluate the results of the divergence for any individual coordinate system, this will prove to be a more effective way to do it. And then we went on to say that the same can be done for the Laplacian because the Laplacian is really the divergence of this term right here. So instead of ti, this contravariant um, derivative of f is the contravariant component of the gradient. So we simply use uh, this expression instead of ti. We get the same advantage for the Laplacian operator as we do for the divergence. Now, in the next video, we'll apply these formulas to each of our sample coordinate systems, and we'll finally get to see what the divergence and the Laplacian look like in each of those cases.